Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we're going to be looking at calculating the atomic packing fraction and ionic packing fraction of a crystal lattice. So this APF just stands for atomic packing fraction. And IPF is the same, except it has ionic instead of atomic. So the only difference between these two is that the APF works for problems where we have a single atom type, whereas the IPF is used whenever we have two different types of atoms, and one of those donates an electron to the other, leaving them as ions. In both cases, the equation that we're going to be using is just a ratio of volumes. So we're gonna be looking at the volume of the spheres divided by the volume of the cube that contains them. So we're gonna to stick to cubic lattices just because the geometry is a lot simpler. But if you have a hexagonal lattice, then this would just be the volume of the hexagon. All right, so let's draw a cubic lattice. To start off, we're going to use a simple cubic, and then we can add to that pretty easily. So in order to get the volume of the spheres, we just need to calculate how much of each sphere is inside the cube, and then count all those pieces up. So if we look at the simple cubic case, then each of these spheres on the corners is only going to have one eighth of the sphere inside. So it gets cut in half by the top plane, cut in half by the left plane, and cut in half by the front plane. But then we count it up, we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spheres. And so the total number of spheres that we end up with is one. Now the other question we have to ask is, what is the volume of the cube? So for any case, no matter what cubic lattice we're looking at, the question is how long is one of these sides, right? Because we know that the volume is just going to be that side cubed. For the simple cubic case, if we are packing these as tightly as we can, then these two spheres are going to be touching. And so we're going to have one radius from the center of this one to here, and then one radius from the center of this one to here. And so the length of this side, which we'll call A, is just going to be two times the radius of our atom. And so if we want to calculate the APF, then we're going to uh, take the volume of the sphere, right? So the volume of the sphere is going to be 4 thirds pi r cubed. Then we're going to multiply by the number of spheres that we have, and then divide by a cubed, right? So divide by the size of the cube, which is just this 2r cubed. So you can do a little bit of math to simplify this down, but the beautiful thing about it is that the r's cancel out, and so you end up with uh, 4 thirds pi divided by 8, which is pi over 6. And this comes out to 0 0.524. So it doesn't matter which atom we're talking about, if we have a simple cubic lattice composed of a single atom, then the packing fraction is going to be 52%. Now let's look at another lattice type. So the next simplest is called the body-centered cubic. So this green atom is right smack dab in the middle. And if we're going to ask what atoms are touching here, right? what's touching so that it can't compress further, it's going to be the atoms along this long diagonal. So from this front top left to the bottom back right, we can draw a line and this atom will go halfway between these two. So we'll have 1R, 2R, 3R, 4R. So for the body centered cubic, we're going to have that the A times the square root of 3 is going to be equal to 4R. And you can get this number just by looking at the square root of the sum of the squares in three dimensions, right? The magnitude of this vector is just a times the square root of three. So let's look at the BCC case. 
And in this case, the number of spheres is two, right? We have just added an additional sphere right smack dab in the middle of the cube. So if we want to calculate the APF this time, we're gonna still have the 4 thirds pi r cubed, but this time we're gonna multiply by two since there are two spheres total in the cube. And we're gonna divide by uh, a cubed again, but this time a is equal to 4r divided by the square root of three. So this is 4r divided by the square root of three and the entire thing cubed. So expanding this out a bit, the r's again will cancel. And so we can say that this is 8 thirds pi divided by 64 over 3 times the square root of 3. So this will cancel out with this. And so we're left with pi times the square root of 3 divided by 8. And if we do that calculation, this is right at 68%. So we get a much higher packing efficiency if we put that extra atom in the middle of the cube. So the cube gets a little bit bigger, but we're doubling the number of spheres that we're fitting inside the cube. Okay, finally for the face-centered cubic, we don't have this middle atom anymore. And instead, we're putting an atom on the center of each of these faces. This one would be on the left, this is the top, this is the right, this is the back, the bottom, and this will be the front. And this time, again, just looking at where the atoms are touching, they're gonna to be touching along the diagonal on each of the faces, not through the center, but along each of those faces. And so for the face-centered cubic, we now have a times the square root of two, again, just taking the magnitude of that vector, which is gonna be equal to four r. So once again, the size of the cube is expanding, but let's count the number of spheres for this one. So we still have the one sphere that comes from the eight corners. Now along this face, this is half of an atom. And so we have half an atom here and on each of these other five. And so we have a total of three additional atoms because of the red spheres that we're talking about. So the total number of spheres is going to be four. One from the corners and three from the six faces. So the calculation looks very much the same, except that we're gonna be multiplying by four in the numerator. And then our value of A is going to be two square root of two R. So again, the R's cancel out. And this time we're gonna have 16 thirds pi in the numerator. So this will be 16 square root two in the denominator. And so the final value that we end up with is going to be pi divided by three square root of two, which is just at 74%. And this right here is as closely as you can pack spheres of equal size in a crystal lattice. So you can perform something similar for the hexagonal close packed crystal lattice, but we're going to go look at an ionic packing fraction. So this answers the question of what if we have different sized spheres? So for the ionic packing factor, let's go look at good old sodium chloride. So this is not the simplest possible ionic crystal structure, but it is one that is widely known, so uh, we'll go ahead and tackle it. So the first part of any of this is we need to know what the crystal structure looks like. And the crystal structure for NaCl is a face-centered cubic for each of the chlorine atoms. And then in each of the gaps, we're going to have a sodium ion. So the sodium ion is going to be put along each of the edges. And then finally, there's gonna be one in the center. Now this is a little bit messy, so I'm gonna try and kind of clean it up by showing you where uh, that center plane is, right? And then we can try to make a center plane here as well. And maybe that's making it worse, but that's what we'll do. This one right here is not on any of those planes. It's smack dab in the middle. Uh, otherwise you can see 
which plane each of those atoms is on. But the key thing is the sodium atoms are on the edges and in the center, and the chlorine atoms are on the faces and the corners. So where do we start with this? Well, first off, let's go ahead and find the radii of those two atoms. So the radius of a chlorine atom is going to be 0 0.181 nanometers. The radius of a sodium atom, sorry, sodium ion, is 0 0.098 nanometers. The tricky part here is that it's not immediately clear which direction is going to be the limiting factor for the size of our cube, right? Calculating the volume of the spheres isn't that bad. We can do that right away. Let's calculate the volume of the spheres first. So the number of chlorine spheres is going to be equal to four, right? This is face centered cubic before we added in the, the sodium ions. For the sodium, we can use the valence of these ions in order to figure that out. Because we have to have charge parity, that means that we have to have the same number of sodium ions as we do chlorine atoms. But let's go ahead and count them just so that we can uh, be sure. So if you look on an edge, an edge is cut by two planes. So each edge ion that we have is going to be one quarter of an atom. So we have 12 edges. That's how many edges are in a cube. Divided by four gives us three ions. And then the one in the middle is undisturbed. And so that gives us plus one. And so we end up with four sodium ions, just as we expected. So the volume of the spheres here is going to be four thirds pi times the radius of the chlorine ions cubed. And how many are those? There are four. And then we add four thirds pi r in a plus cubed. And again, multiply by four just to count the number of ions. And we can go through all that math, but the total volume here is gonna be 0 0.115 nanometers cubed. Now, we need to figure out what is the limiting direction for the size of the cube. For the simple cubic, right, we checked an edge. For the face-centered cubic, we went along the diagonal of a face. And for the BCC, we went along the diagonal of the entire cube. So we need to do the same thing here. Along the edge, we would say that we would say that A is equal to, and we have two RCL, right? Because as we go along the edge, we get an RCL here and an RCL here, and then we get two and a R and A plus. And the value we get for A there is 0 0.558 nanometers. Now let's check along the face. So the face is going to be A times the square root of two. And this time we're gonna have four times the radius of the chlorine ions. And this says that A is gonna be equal to 0 0.512 nanometers. All right, so the edge says that in order to fit these in, we have to have at least 0.558 nanometers to an edge. Looking at the face says that in order to fit these three ions in, we need to have at least 0.512 nanometers on an edge. So both of these are measuring the edge, but we have to go with the larger one, right? Because if it's too small, we can't fit all the ions in. So we need to choose the largest of the options that we end up with. So we know that this one is not right because this one is already larger. Now, the last thing we need to check is across the body. And this one says that A times the square root of three is gonna be equal to, and just looking at this, across the body we have a chlorine radius, then two Na radiuses, and then one more chlorine radius. So this is two times RCL minus plus two RNA plus. And this one gives us that A is equal to 0 0.3, 22 nanometers. 
and this is way smaller. And so we can see that our edge length has to be 0 0.558. Now there's no way to know ahead of time which of these is the actual limiting case. You always have to go check. But now that we have this, it's trivial to calculate the volume of the cube, right? It's just going to be equal to a cubed, which is going to be that 558 number cubed, which gives us 0 0.1. 174 and the units there are nanometers cubed. So going back to our definition, right? The volume of the sphere is divided by the volume of the cube. The IPF for this case is going to be equal to the 0 0.115 divided by 0 0.174. And the units here are the same, so we don't really need to worry about them. We end up with a packing factor of 0 0.661. All right, so that is the procedure to calculate either the atomic packing fraction or the ionic packing fraction. Now, for the atomic packing fraction, uh, these numbers just don't change, right? So once you know what they are, uh, you don't need to do anything else. For the ionic, it depends on the relative size of the atoms as well. And also, the crystal structures for ceramics, uh, which have these ions, tend to be a lot, lot more complicated. And so uh, life is just a bit more challenging. But the overall process of just counting the number of atoms and then checking the edge length, the face, the, the length across the face diagonal and then across the body diagonal um, will still work in order to get you that uh, packing fraction. All right, that's it for this video, and I hope that you found it helpful.